life, the universe, and everything. These things are what many philosophers pondered for lifetimes over. However, for Douglas Adams, there is an easily explainable reason. 42. In the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, seen here, seen clearer here, these and many more questions are answered in similarly ridiculous fashions. The book details four characters, Arthur Dent, a man thrust into adventure due to his planet Earth being blown up, Ford Prefect, a researcher for the guide, stranded on Earth up until its demise. Trillian, another human who avoided Earth's destruction with the help of Zaphod Beeblebrox, the president of the galaxy. The book hosts a mainly lackadaisical attitude, with nearly every character being completely and totally apathetic to everything they come across. Even the narrator doesn't care. Let's read a little, shall we? Far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy lies a small, unregarded yellow sun. Orbiting this, at a distance of roughly 98 million miles, is an utterly insignificant little blue-green planet whose ape descended life forms are so amazingly primitive that they still think digital watches are a pretty neat idea. This planet has or rather had a problem, which was this. Most of the people living on it were unhappy for pretty much of the time. Many solutions were suggested for this problem, but most of these were largely concerned with the movements of small green pieces of paper. Which is odd, because on the whole, it wasn't the small green pieces of paper that were unhappy. And so the problem remained. Lots of the people were mean, and most of them were miserable, even the ones with digital watches. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they all made a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place. And some said that even the trees had been a bad move, and that no one should have ever left the oceans. And then, and then, one Thursday, nearly 2,000 years after one man had been nailed to a tree for saying how great it would be to be nice to people for a change, a girl sitting on her own in the small cafe in Rixmanworth suddenly realized what it was that had been going wrong all this time. And she finally knew how the world could be made a good and happy place. This time it was right. It would work, and no one would have to get nailed to anything. Sadly, however, before she gets to a phone to tell anybody about it, a terrible, stupid catastrophe occurred, and the idea was lost forever. This is not her story. This is a reason I like this book. It's constant use of a particular humor that never fails to make me chuckle. Its use of undermining specific moments with certain gravitas also is wonderful. I also love the questions Adams offers us, which he then undermines almost every time. This, in turn, leads to many a philosophical quandary being explored and destroyed every five seconds, leaving the reader to wonder for him or herself. The final reason why I like Hitchhiker's Guide is how it's structured. True, there's a story being told, but whenever new information about the universe is learned, Adams takes a quick break and explains the concept in detail. This, in turn, makes it feel like a true guide to the galaxy, instead of it just being a title. Even though the style of humor isn't for everybody, I still would recommend this book for the reasons before and more. Still, what really is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? We, as a species, may never know. But until then, don't panic.